What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski and I am back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today uh, I'm going to be bringing you guys a uh, just like a first attempt of this brand new Zero Stamina Forest of Training which is the Alkiji Zero Stamina Dungeon. Now I did a video previously when this was first announced in the game. I uh, made a video about it and I did mention about this could potentially lead to Zephyr but we have some confirmation uh, via the Reddit, the official One Piece Treasure Cruise subreddit, and it is confirmed that Zephyr is not within this Zero Stamina Dungeon. So pretty much it confirms that Global will probably never get Zephyr as a unit in the game, unless we get some sort of replacement or whatever. But anyways, enough about that, we're just going to be trying to break through this dungeon, hopefully completing it. But, you know, I don't really have the best of sockets right now with this team that I am going to attempt it with. And this team that I am going to attempt it with is a Strong World Shanks team. And the reason why we're using a Strong World Shanks team is because I saw a couple of videos online of Japanese players using this team. Uh, the only thing that was different was the fact that, all of, obviously, they had max specials and levels. Uh, I do not have max special on... Uh, T-Bone. T-Bone, you know, that doesn't actually matter because you use him in tandem with Marco anyway, and they both have 20 turns uh, uh, t on, the, on their cooldown, which is actually pretty decent. And for Enaru, is actually replaced by Sengoku. Uh, you know, Sengoku just boosts everyone by 1.5, but, you know, you can just use Enaru, who does do that. But, uh, you know, obviously having Sengoku is kind of better because he uh, he has, you know, better stats and all of that. Uh, you know, with Enaru coming out in the next couple of days, I think he comes out next Monday or something, I'll probably end up socketing out my Enaru and then trying this again because my current story mode Enaru does not have any sockets. So that is the main reason why this team will probably not work. Uh, and I'm also using the Whitebeard chip just because you get a lot of HP. Uh, so for this first 10 stages, I'm just going to be trying to get as much health as possible and I'll see you guys once I reach stage 11. Alright guys, so now we're at stage 10 right now, so as soon as we kill this guy, we will move on to stage 11, which is where the difficult, basically the, the most difficult rooms start to come up. So here we have Django, Full Body, and Hina. Now, let's see what they do here. I don't exactly remember what all of the stages do, uh, and I was going to make a guide video, but, you know, I just decided that I think it's kind of better, like, uh, I don't know, I don't really know how to explain it, guys. I was going to make a guide for you. But, you know, just because there's so many stages and there's so many different teams that can possibly run it, I really didn't have a good guide to create for you guys. You know, maybe later on down the track, I might do like a whole series where I do all of the training forests that come out over and over. Um, but currently, you know, there isn't a guide out. So, I don't actually need to use any specials on this team until we get to, you know, stage 13. So, that's in two stages time. Now, as you can see, I didn't have max uh, chain sockets. Actually, if I just go to the menu real quick and check out my active powers... You can see that I'm actually three sockets away from getting max chain sockets, which is actually a really big deal in this dungeon. Having max chain sockets is almost like a, like a thing that you need. You need to have max chain sockets in order to beat it effectively. And as you can see, I don't have that, so that's going to be a little bit of a pain uh, not having max chain sockets. Uh, so it's going to be make it's going to be making it a little bit more difficult in order to actually clear this dungeon. But uh, yeah, all we need to do is just try and kill these guys without taking as much damage. Uh, hopefully, we can kill them. We can kill them, which is awesome. And then we'll kill Hina in the next turn after this, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, so far so good. So far so good. Don't ha they don't actually have that much health, so they're very, very easy to take down. And now we'll move on to stage 12, which does have Smoker and Toshigi. Now, I'm pretty sure we get our Captain chained for four turns or something like that, which is really, really bad. That is like super, super bad um, because we don't have max chain sockets. We're going to have to wait two turns in order to use our Captain again. So this is going to be a little bit difficult, and I have a feeling we're going to have to take some damage in this room, which obviously you don't want to do. You don't want to take damage in this room, but it looks like we might have to just because we don't have the max chain sockets. Unless we get really good orbs here, that might help out actually. Oh, we got terrible orbs. Oh my god. Okay, so this is actually going to be really bad. We're probably going to take some damage. Not good, not good, not good. Because uh, we probably won't be able to kill Smoker. And we'll be able to kill Toshigi, which is awesome. But we're not going to be able to kill Smoker in this turn, I don't believe. I don't think we'll be able to. Uh, we could pick up that Food Orb. And I think I will pick up that Food Orb. I think that'll be a really, really good idea. Uh, that's awesome. Alright, let's use Strongwood Shanks. Actually, I don't want to get him under 20% just in case if he does something. So we're just going to have to take a regular hit from him, which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, and we actually get a food hole, which is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. And you know what? I might actually try and stall out these. Oh, we don't need to stall out. We've already got all of our specials at max. We could try and get some food orbs. That could potentially be a thing. Uh, but it's not really worth it, to be honest, because if he falls under 20%, I'm not 100% sure if he actually has, like, a, uh, a death trigger or a death blow or whatever if he falls under 20%. 
Alright, so this room here, we have Domino and some uh, Marine units. And I don't remember what these units actually do. So she'll lock... Oh my god, she'll lock our uh, friend Captain for three turns. And, you know, it's the same as before, you know, not having max chain sockets is actually gonna, like, be such a pain in this dungeon. It means that, you know, we're gonna have to wait another turn before we do maximum damage output. Um, but yeah, so we use Golden Pound Usult just to delay everyone, and then we'll just go ahead and do as much damage as we can. Hopefully we can take out at least one of these guys in this first turn. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We got one down. And yeah, we basically have to kill all of these guys before they attack us. So, let's actually just target another unit because he has a really, really high cooldown. So that'll be good for us. Alright, let's target Domino because... Oh my god, we accidentally mistargeted. Oh my god, that is not good. Alright, so we got Domino and what does she do here? What does she do here? She'll lock a unit. I think it's like one turn lock or a two turn lock, which is fine. Uh, we actually might pick up this food orb from, uh, from Shanks. And start dealing damage to Domino. Now that int unit at the bottom will be able to do a lot of damage to him just because we're super effective against him. Uh, and I don't know if putting her under 20% was a good idea. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Alright, we can pick up this food orb here. And kill Domino off right here. And then we can kill this uh, int marine guy off in this next turn. So, so far it's actually going very, very well. A lot better than what I thought this team was actually going to do. Uh, you know, obviously not having the max chain sockets is going to be such a pain, but so far so good. And in this room we have uh, Sadie and three of the um, three of the people from Impel Down. Uh, so she puts up a defense, which is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and use uh, Strongwood Shanks' special. Now, I believe this guy's cooldown isn't at max. Yeah, this guy's only at 22 turns. Which is a little bit of pain. I wish I would have known, like, I wish I would have actually looked at the turns before I actually picked that, that Shanks as a captain. Because that actually might come into play later on down the track, but hopefully it doesn't. So let's go ahead and use uh, our guys to attack. And we should be able to kill uh, at least two of these units this turn. We'll be able to kill Sadie, and then we'll target the Koala here as well. Nice. Okay, uh, it is a bit of a shame that the the guy on the left side doesn't have a higher cooldown because I have seen videos where he does have a very, very high cooldown and it would have been awesome if we were able to get a really high cooldown on him, but unfortunately not. We should be able to take down the koala in this one turn here and boom. All right, sweet. So hopefully we get some good orbs and we'll be able to take him down next turn. We get full matching orbs. That is wicked. That is wicked. All right, let's go ahead and take him down. Oh man, he has a lot of health. He's very, very tanky. All right, no, no, no. We're not going to put him on 20%. We're going to have to take a hit. Oh, god damn, he does so much damage. I didn't actually realize he did that much damage. Now, he is on a four-turn cooldown, so maybe we can go ahead here and look for some food orbs. I think that's probably the best play right now. Uh, just to get some health recovery, because I didn't realize he actually had that much damage output. So, it's actually awesome that we're getting some food orbs here. That's really, really good. Okay, so the reason why I didn't do that much damage is because he's obviously still got the shield up. That shield is a big, big problem. Uh, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's just do some regular hits this turn, and we'll save the orb on Shanks, just because he does the most damage on our team. So he's probably the best one to keep an orb on, and we don't get any more food orbs, so we just have to go ahead and kill off the Mino Rhinoceros this turn. I couldn't even remember his name the whole time, but Mino Rhinoceros, we finally killed him, and we move on to stage 15. Okay, so we've got Suru, and we have Momonga, and we have Onigumo. So let's go ahead and use Golden Pound Usopp here. And we're going to go target Suru, because Suru has an ability where um, if you leave her alive, she'll actually recover every two turns or every three turns. So we're going to take down Suru first. Uh, just, that just enables us to, uh, you know, disable the recovery that the enemies will have. And then we'll target uh, Momonga next. Unfortunately, we didn't hit our perfects, which actually might come into play later on. But uh, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so as long as we take down these guys before they attack us, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. But so far, we're doing a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a huge, huge fail. But we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we should be able to kill Momonga. And then we'll be able to deal a lot of damage to uh, Onigumo. And hopefully get some good orbs next turn in order to kill him without taking damage. Uh, but it looks like we're probably going to have to take damage unless we get like full matching orbs. Okay, this could be good, this could be good. So Shanks has uh, 15,000 attack. Okay, so we use this order. Boom. 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 And yes, awesome. Okay, so we took down Onigumo. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Stage 16 now. Okay, now this is like one of the most difficult rooms. Uh, because you have Helmeppo does a preemptive attack. You've also got Garp, who puts up a debuff protector, which is really, really bad. 
And with Kobe, Kobe can spawn in on a one, two, or three turn cooldown. Obviously three turn would be the most optimal, uh, but he does have a two turn cooldown, which is really bad for us. Uh, hmm, this is gonna be really, really tricky actually. Um, hmm. I'm not, I'm not too sure how much damage Garp actually does. I'm, I know he would do a decent amount of damage. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually pick up this food orb here. We're going to try and target down Helmepo first because uh, we can kill him pretty pretty easily. And Eneru, uh, we should have targeted Garp first because Garp is the, uh, is the number one problem on this team. Now, Kirby on the first turn that he attacks, he doesn't actually attack you. He powers up and then he'll attack you. And then he'll keep repeating that attack pattern as well, which is nice. Um... And we will probably definitely have to take an attack from Garp, which I'm not looking forward to. Garp does a whole lot of damage. We do pick up another food orb here, so I will end up picking that up just in case if we don't live his attack. Uh, so let's go ahead, pick up the food orb. Nice. Okay. Boom. And then T-Bone. And then Shanks. Boom. Alright, so Garp's going to attack us. Uh, I'm not too sure how much he does. Hopefully we live it. Hopefully we live it. I, I, I think it's a decent amount. Wow, he does 18,000. That's more than my overall health. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we got destroyed. So like, as I mentioned at the start of the video, like having... Um, oh my god, my recording software stopped up again. But having access to Sengoku instead of Sai Eneru is a whole lot better than, uh, than Eneru, as I was mentioning, because Sengoku has so much better stats, and he just enables you to deal, like, so much more damage in regular attacks. So, uh, maybe if I level up my Eneru and my T-Bone a little bit more, and obviously when Eneru comes out again, the raid boss version, I can go ahead and socket out my uh, Sai Eneru, and I can try this team again, and I have a feeling that this team will actually be able to do it. Uh, you know, I've watched a couple of videos, and this team actually looks really, really solid. Obviously, if you have Log Luffy and stuff, and you know, Log Luffy is very, very good to use. Uh, he can clear anything in the game, so uh, Log Luffy is very, very good. But anyways, that is going to conclude today's video, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. And if you guys have enjoyed it, make sure to leave the like button down below. But if you want to, you know, stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.